Thank you everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm diving into the fascinating world of skin aging, the lifestyle choices that can help delay it, and the science behind some energy-based treatments or EBDs for skin rejuvenation. There's a lot of marketing hype and misinformation because the optimal treatments for each person can vary. So let's start by understanding the causes of skin aging. Genetics and ethnicity play a crucial role. For instance, Asian skin typically has a thicker and more compact dermis, which can delay the appearance of wrinkles, but makes it more prone to sagging. As we age, collagen loss becomes significant. Caucasians tend to develop fine lines and wrinkles earlier than those with darker skin. During the menopause transition, women can lose up to 30% of their collagen in just five years. But the use of hormone therapy for skin aging is complex. You can watch this video for more information on this topic. UV radiation is another major factor. Those with higher melanin content, like individuals with darker skin, may experience pigmentation changes like hyperpigmentation and melasma. UV rays accelerate photoaging, leading to uneven skin tone and dark spots. Living in urban areas with high pollution may further damage the skin barrier and increase oxidative stress, exacerbating the aging process. Lifestyle choices such as smoking, poor diet, lack of hydration and insufficient sleep can accelerate skin aging. Did you know that smoking increases the breakdown of collagen and elastin? Now let's compare young and aging skin across three primary layers. In young skin, the epidermis is thicker with a robust barrier function, while aging skin sees a thinner epidermis and dysfunctional melanocyte activity, resulting in dry skin that is easily irritated and the appearance of aged spots. The dermis in young skin is rich in collagen and elastin, providing firmness and elasticity. In contrast, aging skin experiences decreased collagen production and elastin degradation, leading to wrinkles and sagging. Finally, the hypodermis in young skin consists of a thick layer of fat, offering a plump appearance. As we age, this fat diminishes, leading to volume loss, downward migration, and the prominence of skeletal features. Aging also affects our facial muscles. As skin layers thin, muscle movement becomes more pronounced, deepening dynamic lines around the forehead, brows, and eyes. The combination of increased wrinkles, thinning skin, fat loss, and downward migration results in an aged appearance. The first step in preventing accelerated photoaging is sun protection. This includes not just sunscreen, but also wearing hats, sunglasses, and sun protective clothing. Addressing lifestyle factors is essential. Smoking cessation, a balanced diet, proper hydration, and quality sleep are all part of a holistic strategy to maintain youthful skin. Check out the AI prediction model called Change My Face. I have used this AI tool to age progress this model based on her lifestyle choices so that you can see how it could impact skin aging. Now let's explore skin rejuvenation treatments. Lasers and energy-based devices have become increasingly popular due to reduced recovery time while delivering comparable results. It's essential to practice good skincare leading up to procedures. If you are using vitamin A derivatives like retinol or prescription tretinoin, inform your doctor beforehand. Vitamin A derivatives can enhance the penetration of some energy-based devices, which may or may not be wanted. Also, avoid treatment for one to two weeks if you recently had more sun exposure. Intense pulse light, or IPL, has been used since the mid-1990s for treating photo-age skin. IPL is a broadband light source with wavelengths ranging from 500 nanometers to 1,200 nanometers operating in the near-infrared spectrum. It is not coherent, meaning the light waves are not synchronized, making it a versatile treatment that addresses multiple components of photodamaged skin. Lasers, which stand for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation, offer targeted treatments for various skin concerns, including pigmentation, vascularity, and photoaging. A laser is a device that produces a coherent, intense and focused beam of monochromatic light where light waves are of the same wavelength and travel in the same direction. Lasers can be harnessed based on their wavelength, 
pulse duration, or the crystal medium used. For example, the 1064 nanometer QS NDYAG laser, which stands for Q-switch neodymium doped yttrium aluminum garnet, emits short, high-energy pulses in the nanosecond range and is commonly used to treat pigmentation and photoaging. Different lasers are specialized for other various purposes, such as treating vascular changes, hair removal, cutting, coagulating, and vaporizing. Their use requires proper training and expertise. Possible complications of laser treatments include burns, scarring, infection, prolonged redness, hyperpigmentation, and hypopigmentation. Minimally invasive technologies like radio frequency or RF, high intensity focus ultrasound or HIFU, and microfocus ultrasound or MFU stimulate the skin to create heat, tightening and rejuvenation of the skin. RF uses electrical energy to create heat. There are two types of RF electrode configurations available, monopolar and bipolar. Monopolar RF penetrates deeper but may be more painful. Bipolar RF is often used with other light-based therapies such as infrared to provide similar efficacy. If energy is too high, burns, hyperpigmentation, scarring, and fat necrosis can occur. In contrast, HIFU and MFU devices generate mechanical sound waves with differing frequency and intensity through the tissues causing molecules to oscillate and in this way transform it into heat energy. Procedures can be painful and may require a local topical anesthetic. Many of these treatments require multiple sessions for optimal results. There is a consensus on the efficacy of energy-based devices in cosmetic dermatology, particularly for acne scars, skin tightening, and hyperpigmentation. However, the effectiveness can vary based on skin type and specific conditions. While advancements have improved safety and outcomes, standardized treatment guidelines are still needed to optimize their use across different patient demographics. It is critical to consult with a qualified and experienced provider for a proper evaluation, discussion of risks, costs, and address your expectations of treatment results. EBD skin treatments can be performed by nurses, doctors, or beauty therapists, depending on the regulations in your country. There are no universal credentials required for their use. In some countries, EBDs are classified as medical devices, requiring licensed health professionals to operate them. However, in many other regions, this is not the case. The training and qualifications needed to use EBDs for cosmetic purposes can vary significantly, and in many instances, no basic qualifications are required. So it's important to look beyond the glossy marketing of many of these therapies. If it sounds too good to be true, it's a red flag. Join me next time as I discuss the science behind injectable products for skin and facial tissue rejuvenation. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for updates on my latest videos. Thank you for watching. Remember, taking care of your skin is a lifelong journey, and the basic strategies aren't fancy, but they are safe. Until next time, stay radiant.